Hey, so I've created a fair amount of Discord bot features, but I've never really created anything that involves multiple users. So in this video, you'll be learning how to make a bot which allows users to challenge others in a game of rock, paper, scissors. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to create your own multiplayer mini games on Discord. Now, considering you're actually following along, I recommend checking the starter files linked down below if you don't already have a basic Discord.js project. So in our code, let's get started by creating a file inside our commands folder. I'm going to be calling this rps.js. And as always, each one of our command files needs to export an object. So let's go ahead and use module.exports and export an object. Now let's go ahead and set the structure of our command by setting the data property. And from here, we can set the name. And in this case, I'm just going to call this RPS, which is short for rock, paper, scissors. And I'm going to go ahead and set the description to play rock, paper, scissors with another user. I'm also going to go ahead and set the DM permission to false. That way, this command cannot be executed or registered within a direct message. Now, because we also want to add a user option, we must set the options to an array. And we're only going to have one object. In this case, this object is going to have the name of user and the description, which is going to be the user you want to play with. Now we also must set a type, which is going to be the type of this option. And for that, let's go ahead and import Discord JS. From Discord JS, we're going to go ahead and import application command option type, and we can use this within our options object. And we can set the type to application command option type dot user. And we're also going to go ahead and set the required to true. So that's our command structure done. Let's now move on to our run function. So I'm going to create this right above my data property. And from this run function, we can go ahead and destructure interaction. Now, because this interaction is going to be a slash command interaction, I can go ahead and paste this code right here, which will give me some code completion in my code editor. This is completely optional. And even without this, your code will work just fine. What this does is if I now try to do interaction dot, well, it's not working because I did not import chat input command interaction. But once we import that from Discord JS, and now we try to do interaction dot, you can see we have a bunch of autocomplete options. So anyway, we can go ahead and make this function asynchronous because we're going to be using a wait inside of it. And we can also go ahead and set a try catch block. Inside the catch block, I'm just going to add a console log saying error with slash RPS. And then at the bottom, I'm going to say console.error and then pass in the error that we get. Now, before we start writing our run function, let's go ahead and define all our choices. So I'm going to say const choices, and this is going to be an array of objects. And the first object will have name, which is rock, and then emoji, which pretty much represents this choice, which in this case is going to be a rock. And then we also want to set a property called beats, which determines what this choice actually beats. So in this case, a rock beats scissors. We can go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of the choices. So with our choices set, we can now go ahead and work on our run function. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our target user, which is within our options. So I'm going to go ahead and define a variable called target user and set this to interaction.options.getUser. And this is going to be from the string user. Now let's go ahead and check if the person is trying to play rock, paper, scissors with themselves. So we can check that by saying if interaction user ID, which is the person running the command exactly equals to target user dot ID, then we can go ahead and reply using interaction dot reply. I'm going to set the content to you cannot play rock, paper, scissors with yourself. And then I'm also going to set ephemeral to true. That way, only the person who ran the command will be able to see this message and also make sure to return right after. Now, the next thing that we want to check is if the target user, which is the person we mentioned, is actually a bot. Obviously, we cannot play rock, paper, scissors with bots. So let's go ahead and also check that. So we can say if target user dot bot, then in this case, we can go ahead and reply using interaction dot reply. Again, we're going to go ahead and set the content. And this time we're going to say you cannot play rock, paper, scissors with a bot. And then we're going to set ephemeral to true once again and make sure to return. Now let's go ahead and create our initial embed. So for that, we need to go ahead and import embed builder from Discord JS. Once you do that, go back to your run function and we're going to go ahead and define embed using const embed equals new embed builder. And we're going to be attaching a bunch of methods. 
The first one is going to be set title, and this is going to be rock, paper, scissors. Obviously, you can customize this to however you'd like it to be. I'm also going to go ahead and set a description, which will mention whose turn it currently is. So initially, it is the target user's turn. So let's go ahead and say it's currently, and then mention the target user and turn. Next, we can go ahead and set a color. And in this case, I'm just going to set this to yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and set a timestamp. And this is going to be new date. Okay, so our embed is done, but we also need to create some buttons. These buttons are going to be attached to the reply that we're going to be sending back to the user. So let's go ahead and import button builder from Discord JS. And just to save us the hassle later on, let's also go ahead and import action row builder as this will help us package our buttons and send them back to Discord. So right after we create our embed, let's go ahead and create our buttons. Now, because we have choices defined up here, this is going to be pretty easy. So I'm going to say const buttons, and this is going to be choices dot map. And then we're going to map over each choice and each choice is going to return a new button builder. And to this class, we're going to be attaching a bunch of methods, just like we did with the embed builder. The first one is going to be the custom ID. And this custom ID is going to be the name of the choice. So we can set this to choice dot name. And if you don't know what the name is, it's pretty much these names right here. Next, we can go ahead and set a label, which is the text that shows up on the button. So I can say set label and we can set this to choice.name once again. Next, we also want to set the style for the button. So set style. And then for this, we need to import something else from Discord JS. So that is button style. And we can set the style to button style dot primary. Now, primary is the blue color, but you can change this to whatever you want. Next, we want to set the emoji, which goes next to the label. So we can say set emoji, and this is going to be choice dot emoji. So that's our buttons done, which is going to be an array of these button builder classes. So now let's go ahead and define our row, which we're going to be sending back as a reply. So I can say const row and set this to a new action row builder. And to this, we can add components. Now we have multiple components, but since we have them as an array, we can just set this to buttons. Now let's go ahead and reply to the user with the initial message. So we're going to say await interaction dot reply. And then in our content, we're going to ping the person who was targeted. So we're going to say target user, and we're going to let them know by saying you have been challenged to a game of rock, paper, scissors. And we're going to say by who, so by interaction dot user. And we're also going to let them know what they should do next. So we're going to say to start playing, click one of the buttons below. Okay. So alongside this reply, we also want to set our embeds. So we can set embeds to one embed, which is this one right here. We also want to set our buttons, which are part of this row. So we can go ahead and say components and then set this to the row that we just defined. Now, because we want to collect the buttons right after we send this reply, let's also go ahead and store this reply that was sent in a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called reply and set this to await interaction reply. So now let's go ahead and check if everything is working fine so far. So I'm going to open up my terminal and say node dot. So it's gone ahead and registered my RPS command globally. So let's head over to discord and try to run that command. So I'm going to say slash RPS. And we have our bot right here with the user option. So I'm going to try to mention myself and see what it does. So it says you cannot play rock, paper, scissors with yourself. So it works. Let's also try the bot. So in this case, I'm going to try mentioning Dino. And it says you cannot play rock, paper, scissors with a bot. So now let's go ahead and try to run this command by actually mentioning another person. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and mention my friend. And as you can see, it pings them. And then it says you have been challenged to a game of rock, paper, scissors by me, and then it tells them to start playing, click on one of the buttons below. So now we know that the buttons and the embed all work perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and now collect these button clicks. So back in our code, right after we initially send a reply, let's go ahead and now start collecting button clicks. So we can do that by saying await reply, which is the reply that we sent. And then we can attach a collector so we can say await message component. And to this, we can set a filter. A filter is basically a condition that this collector will go over every time a person clicks on one of the buttons that was sent alongside this interaction. So in this case, we want the filter to only allow the target user to click on the buttons. 
So in this case, we can go ahead and define I, which is going to be the button click interaction. And we can check the user ID by saying I dot user ID exactly equals to target user dot ID. Now we also want a timeout because it doesn't make sense for the game to go on forever. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set a time and I'm going to set this to 30,000. 30,000 is pretty much 30 seconds in milliseconds. And you can set this to whatever you want. Now, whatever interaction is collected, I want to store it in a variable. And I'm going to call this variable target user interaction. Oh, and I completely forgot. If the time runs out, then this component collector will pretty much throw an error. So we need to catch that error using dot catch. And we can go ahead and get the error. We can actually make this function asynchronous because we're going to be editing our initial reply. And this catch block is going to be triggered when this time runs out. So in this case, let's go ahead and edit our initial reply. So the first thing that I want to do is edit this embed that we sent initially and change the description. So within this catch block, I'm going to say embed dot set description, and I'm going to say game over target user did not respond in time. And then of course we need to edit the initial reply. So let's say await reply dot edit. And then we're going to set the embeds to this new updated embed. And then we're also going to go ahead and remove all the buttons. So to do that, we can say components and we can just set this to an empty array. Now, because we cannot write return over here, since it will only work for this function, what we can do is we can check if target user interaction does not exist. So if an error was thrown, then naturally target user interaction will not exist. So in this case, we can say if not target user interaction, then in this case, we can go ahead and return. Okay, so now let's go ahead and determine what the person picked. Remember, each one of our buttons have a custom ID. So we can use this custom ID and we can compare it to the choices that we created earlier. So I'm going to create a variable called target user choice. And this is going to be the choice of the person who was mentioned. And we can set this to choices.find. And then we're going to find the choice using their name. So I'm going to say choice.name must exactly match target user interaction dot custom ID. Okay, awesome. So now we have the choice of the person who was mentioned. Now let's go ahead and switch the turn to the person who triggered the command. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm actually going to go ahead and reply to the user who clicked on the button by saying await target user interaction dot reply. And then I'm going to set the content to you picked target user choice dot name. And then I'm just going to add the emoji just so it looks much more personalized by saying target user choice dot emoji. And then of course, I'm going to set the ephemeral to true as well. So the other person cannot see. Now, the reason why we are sending a reply is because if we don't, then the person will get the interaction failed message when they click on the button. So this reply will basically be the next best thing since they will not get that message and they will also be notified of what they picked and they can dismiss it. So the other person also cannot see this message. Okay, so now let's go ahead and edit the initial embed that we sent. So I'm going to say edit embed with the updated user turn, just so we know where we are. So we're going to set the description by saying embed.set description. And we're going to switch this to it's currently interaction.users turn. If you remember, it was first target user. So we've changed this. So let's go ahead and edit our reply by saying await reply.edit. We're also going to change the content. So we're going to say interaction.user, it's your turn now. And of course, we're also going to pass in the embed that we just edited. So I'm going to say embeds and set this to the embed that we just modified. After we do all of this, we need to check for other button clicks. The logic is pretty much the same as we added right here. So we can go ahead and copy it. Matter of fact, we can also go ahead and copy this line right down here. We can go ahead and paste it. And this is going to be changed from target user interaction to initial user interaction. And of course, the same applies over here. If this does not exist, then we're going to go ahead and return. And the reason why this would happen is if the time runs out. Speaking of which, we need to update our filter and we need to change the target user ID to interaction dot user ID. Even inside the catch block, instead of saying target user, we need to say interaction dot user did not respond in time. OK, awesome. We can now go ahead and get our choice from the array that we created earlier, just like we did with the other user. So we can say const initial user choice and set this to choices dot find. 
and we're going to find the choice by its name, of course. So choice dot name exactly equals to initial user interaction dot custom ID. Okay, so we now have both of the choices that the users have submitted. So we can now determine who the winner actually is. So let's define a variable called result. And the reason why we're using let is we're going to be changing this later on. Now we're going to have a few if statements. So I'm going to say if target user choice dot beat equals to initial user choice dot name, then in this case, the target user actually won. So I'm going to say result equals to target user one. And then we can create another if statement saying if initial user choice dot beats exactly equals to target user choice dot name. So in this case, we can set the result to interaction dot user one. And then finally, we want to check if both the results are the same. So we're going to say if target user choice dot name exactly equals to initial user choice dot name, then in this case, it's a tie. So we're going to set the result to it was a tie. Finally, we can go ahead and update the embed description with the result. So let's go ahead and say embed dot set description. And the description is going to be a bit weird because we're going to be using template literals. So the first thing is going to be target user picked, and then we're going to be adding their choice. So it's going to be target user choice dot name plus the emoji just for a little more personalization. And then in a new line, we're going to say interaction dot user picked, and then we can also add their choice. So in this case, it's going to be initial user choice dot name plus the emoji for personalization, of course. And then we're going to add two line breaks to write the result. So the result is going to be result just like this. Okay, so the description is done. We can now go ahead and edit the initial reply. So I can say reply dot edit, and we're going to edit our embeds and set it to the modified embed. And of course, because the game is over, we can go ahead and remove our buttons by setting the component array to an empty array. So hopefully this should work. So let's save our file and start our bot using node dot. Okay, so back in discord, I'm going to run the slash RPS command, and I'm going to go ahead and mention my friend. Okay, so it's challenged my friend and he's going to make a choice. Okay, so my friend has already made a choice and it's currently my turn. So if I click on rock, okay, so we both picked rock, so it was a tie. Let's try this again one more time. This time I'm going to wait 30 seconds just to show you what happens when the time runs out. Okay, so it seems like that it actually removed the buttons when the time ran out, but it did not actually update the description. So what I want to do now is I want to try to run this command once again and see if the same thing happens for my friend. Okay, so the same thing actually happens for my friend. So there is a little bit of a problem in our code. Okay, so the error actually seems to be a slight typo. Instead of saying embeds, I actually set this to embed. So if you did the same thing, just go ahead and set this to embeds instead. And we can do the same thing for our initial user interaction. So just change this like that and save your file and restart your bot. Back in Discord, if I try to run the command once again and wait for 30 seconds, as you can see, after 30 seconds, it has removed the buttons as well as update the description. So the same thing will happen if I ignore the buttons. So there you have it. This is how you can create a multiplayer Discord JS game. If you guys need any help, then be sure to join my Discord server and ask for help in the appropriate channels. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.